That's right. They're, these are your people. These are your people. Oh, God. Thank you. And our time is up. We'll be right back. <laughs> Thank you. you. That was do you so ever get used to the amount of joy you see on people's faces when you walk by? Because even in the building, Oprah, this is the craziest thing that's ever happened to me. Let me tell you now. We're backstage. Oh. I'm getting my makeup done. We're walking. <laughs> then Oprah just walks. She doesn't come through like the celebrity entrance. No, she just walks through the building, just greeting everyone. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> but surely you realize that you are causing chaos everywhere you go. No. no. Actually, I love these moments. I, this happens to me quite often. I'll run into someone who says, oh my God, you don't know. You don't know what this means and I said yeah I do you came home from school your mom wasn't there yes you yes. were a latchkey kid you watched me at four o'clock right so I raised you right yes and they're like yes you raised <laughs> that's exactly me. what it is so I I feel like um I feel rewarded by that I feel like I think I, I did a good lot of good job raising people I think oh. you did a great job that's what I think and but this is what, Trevor, I knew it was time to leave the show when people who had come to the show, then they had children, and their children were now having children <laughs> watching the show. It's time to go. You know, you say that, but I honestly wonder if you didn't leave too soon. Here's why I say this. You left the show, but it feels like we never got tired of Oprah. I mean, we, we, we now are watching you on Super Soul Sundays. We're now yeah, seeing good. Oprah. Do, do you think it, you just needed a break Well, you know what? Else? I do wish that th th there... Uh, I, the only time I actually really missed Miss Missed It was 2016, because I thought for sure that speaking to the audience every day, because this is what I missed the most. Right. I missed having a discourse <laughs> with the audience every day. And because every day after the show, I would spend time with the audience. Because for right. years, I signed autographs. And then I thought, one day, I didn't, and I had so much more energy. What do I really want to do? I want to talk to the audience. So the audience, 10 years in, became my biggest focus group. Oh, wow. Yes. And so we would talk and talk and talk. So I would not have been surprised by the election or anything, because I would have been talking to people from all states. You would have been in touch with them. I would that's have been, really interesting. It would have been my direct connection. And so that's what I missed. That, it feels like that's the story of your life, is you love to be in an environment where you are in touch with human beings. That's what this book feels like it's about. The path made clear, discovering your life's direction and purpose. You seem like someone who's always had your path, like, nailed yeah, down. Yeah, pretty clear. Yeah. Pretty clear. Like, where do you think you got that from, and why do you think this book will help people do the same Just thing? Just like you, being raised... First of all, I love your book so much. Okay. I love you. your book so much. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> love your book so much. And being raised by a strong grandmother who yes. taught me to read, but what I learned to read was the Bible and grew up, you know, in kindergarten. When I went to kindergarten, you know the story that when I went to kindergarten? No. I uh, had been in Mississippi, which was an apartheid state. Right, when I was right, born. right. And so when I moved to Milwaukee and uh, had just started kindergarten, I walked in and all these little white kids were doing their ABCs. And I said, I know some big words. And I wrote them all down to my kindergarten teacher. Oh, wow. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, <laughs> me and my grandma. <laughs> and I got myself out of kindergarten the first day. That is so, hilarious. Yes. So, being grounded in something that I knew was bigger than myself... Yes. Is, is, ..is set the course for me to understand that there's always something greater than you and that no matter what, you are going to be all right. So that should be your mantra. Look at wherever you've come from. <laughs> Things are always working out for you. The, and when you have faith, you know that things always will. The book really feels like a conversation with the reader that does exactly that. It talks to you about the journeys and the steps that you can take in life to get you where you need to be. What I enjoy is you speak to people who are inspiring all walks of life. Yes. And what I, what I've that's my favorite thing to do. That's what I've noticed. You yes, love, love being woo! inspired by people. But it. you're Oprah. <laughs> but you're Oprah, though. No, that, but it's... Why did you choose these people in the book to inspire us with their stories? Because they're all people that I've been talking to over the years. On right. Special Sunday and Master Classes. You, you're on page 169. I am. Uh, yes, you are. <laughs> and, uh, and a few more. <laughs> so they're all people who've inspired me because at this stage in my life, I only talk to who I want to talk to, OK? Yeah! So... <laughs> I really do. And so to be, to be surrounded by people, and this is the truth, whether you have a talk show or not, whatever you're doing in your life, you need to surround yourself with people who are going to stimulate, inspire, and lift you up, who are going to give you energy and not take energy away from you. And if you're around people who are taking energy away from you, that's an energy drain, and that is the sign from your instinct 
your inner voice, your intuition to say, let them go. Wow. Yeah. Wow. When you look at successful people, you have talked to everyone in the yeah, world who is successful. What would you say is the one common characteristic that you find gets people to where they want to go? Um, the, the most important question is, uh, the people get to where they want to go because they know where they want to go. Oh, wow. And most people don't know where they want to go. Most people, a lot of people, are going and being driven by what they think they should do, right. what other people say they should do, what they have carried in their mind for a long time they should do. But the most important question you can ever ask yourself is what do I really want? Wow. And the answer to that, once you can establish for yourself what the answer to that is, and have everything you do, every choice you make, move you in the direction of what you say your vision is. Right. Yeah. And when you do that, the, 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 the forces of life rise up to meet you. The reason why most people have such chaotic lives is because they're living in chaos in their head. And as soon as you get clear, it clears up. You, you, you have... It clears up. You and I this... did this book, you know what? One of the reasons I did this book, because, you know, I have all these wonderful girls from South Africa who love you. Yes, who yes. Who say, Mama well... Oprah, he's on the road. Could you get us some tickets? <laughs> Could you well, get to us... to give you context, here's the thing. So, 12 years ago, you started the Oprah Winfrey Leadership Academy in South Africa, which is honestly one of the most amazing institutions... Because it goes, it goes beyond just a school. Yes. It's, it's an idea. Yeah. It's, you, you, you've gotten girls in a country where... Thank you for, for saying so that. long. No, it really is. It's yeah. an idea where you've said to these young black girls who are powerful and empowered to be like, hey, be the best you can be. Yeah. And you are creating leaders. Yeah. yeah. But what you found, and you speak about this, is that there was a pressure that came with that, where they went, I went to Oprah's school, which yes. means I have to be everything. Yeah. But you only have to be yourself because there's nobody else in the world who's quite like you. And what your real job is to do is to come to the world and understand that your job is to figure out what it is you have to offer. Right. Like, what you do every night looks like a talk show, but what you're offering us is relief. What you're offering us is a way to see ourselves differently. What you're offering us is humor, but what you're offering us is a way in to see our culture. And that is what you do. And so it's bigger than a talk show. It's bigger than just this moment with you and I sitting in the chair. Wow. Because what you are broadcasting to the world is this sort of essence of yourself. You know, your purpose is greater than, than this moment in this chair. You was know there, that. Was there ever a moment where you maybe had the wrong idea of what your purpose would be? I know you speak a little bit about it in the book, but was there ever a moment where you failed and you're glad that you failed because it put you on the path that you were meant to be on? Well, you know, we were just talking about this during the co commercial break. It was actually a, a show that I was doing with skinheads and, you know, uh, white supremacists where I thought I was showing the world their vitriol right. and letting the world see that. And I recognized they were actually using me. They were using that platform because I, at the time, did not understand how powerful the platform was. Wow. So when I figured that out, I literally said, I'm only going to use my work, this platform, as a force for good. Yes. I will cause no harm. I will cause no harm. When, let me ask you this. When you... When you... When you were demoted from the news division... Oh, yeah. That's, that's an interesting moment, because, you know, in life, they always go, you know, fail, and then try again, and try again, and try yeah. again. But this is, this is an interesting one, because you, you technically failed at the news division. You were demoted to the talk show, but yeah. the talk show ended up being the greatest promotion the in your life. The first day I was on the talk show, which was like the Carvel Ice Cream Man, okay? It's not like a big guest. Yes. It's the Carvel Ice Cream Man and his multi-flavors. Okay. <laughs> but I had been, been demoted from the news because I was too emotional. I would get too engaged in the stories. I would go, yes, I was too emotional, and I was always getting written up for being too emotional with the stories. And so, had I not been demoted, I probably would have, for a long time, continued on that path, because my father was like, they're paying you $25,000, you better keep that job. So, <laughs> I would have stayed for all the wrong reasons, instead of taking what looked like a failure in the moment and being demoted. Right. And then, the moment I sat down on my first talk show, I thought, I have come home to myself. And that's what everybody is looking for the path that allows you to come home to yourself. I feel like, I feel like you're creating that for others now, because now we're seeing Oprah Winfrey, the executive producer. We're seeing the own network. We're seeing your work with creators. David Oyelowo was on the show the yeah, other day talking yeah, about yeah. his first opportunity to direct. When you are creating, and when you are helping others to create, mm. you, you, you have to take a different position, because it's not for you, it's well, for somebody else. You know, but the one most wonderful thing, I think, that everybody, and especially if you've been able to be blessed and achieved as much as I have, 
the great reward and joy comes from being able to lift other people up. Right. To, 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 to look back or reach back and lift other people to the highest level of themselves, because that's really what we're all looking for. Right. That's what I say in here, that the reason why there is common ground for all of us is because you want the same thing I want. And even in my position in life, I'm still reaching for what is the truest, highest expression of myself as a human being. Wow. That's the path you're looking for. And when you know that that's what we're all looking for, so my job is I think I've found that and I continue to find it by helping other people to find that for themselves. One of the ways you're doing that is by creating a docu-series with Prince Harry about mental... Oh, what a mental, good segue. About <laughs> mental... <laughs> Oh, you can't peel back the curtain, Oprah. Uh, the man's got <laughs> skills. The man's got one of, skills. One of the things you're doing is talking about mental health. And I love how you, you, you do, you've you called it mental fitness because that's yes. how we need to think of it as people. Are we healthy in our minds? You're working with Prince Harry, which is really exciting. I'm going, what is it like to work with royalty for him? Uh... <laughs> He is a great partner, and I want everybody to know that, uh, first of all, I don't do or engage in anything unless I'm giving 100%. He feels the same, and so he is a great partner in helping us decide what we're, who we're going to interview, how it's going to be interviewed, what subjects we're going to be covering. I've had, you know, meetings with him, we've sat down with our team, and we're working together with, on this as a real partnership. It's so, really, it, yeah. it's genuinely so, exciting. I mean, yeah. everything, everything you do blows up. Everything Well, Cobra you know why it was so important to me? This is why it was so important to me. Because I have a girls' school, and you know, these girls come from provinces all yes. over South Africa. Yes. When you're dealing with people who come from lots of trauma, those, that trauma shows itself in later life mm -hmm. as depression sometimes, as anxiety sometimes, as mental health issues. And there was a time where I had five girls in the hospital at the same time wow. with depression, suicidal ideation, all kinds of things. So I became interested in the subject of mental health because I spent too many times in a psych ward and because I recognized that the, the impact of poverty and the impact of trauma in right. poverty really causes people to carry that into their lives unless it is processed and unless they can come forward in a way that releases it. So for me, doing this mental health series is a way of releasing the shame, helping people to release the shame and the stigma for, stigma for themselves. Because there's almost nobody you know that doesn't have somebody in their family yes. who's going through some kind of difficulty. W when you speak about trauma, is that one of the reasons you were so drawn to the Michael Jackson documentary? Because I noticed when you were, when you were speaking about that, it felt personal to you. It felt visceral. But, well, but you got a lot of hate for doing oh, that. Oh, so much hateration. I haven't had that much hateration since I did the puppy episode with Ellen. So, Are you serious? Yes. And you know what? I was, I, I, I was saying this the other day, that I'm so glad that when I did the puppy ep episode for Ellen, where Ellen came out, and uh, people just... We had to take people off the switchboard because there's so much hateration going wow. on. Wow. Because that was before there was... Um, the tweets. Uh, tweets and social media. But um, imagine had that happened now. Imagine if that had happened now. Right. And you had social media. So I had a lot of hateration. But I also, when I first saw that a documentary... I realize that a lot of people are going to get triggered, are going to be triggered by watching it. Yes. And that a lot of people will not understand what the pattern is, because I had done 217 shows trying to get people to understand that it's not about one person, that it is about the pattern. It mm -hmm. is about the seduction. And people call it molestation, but there is a big seducing that goes on right. and the pattern of that seducing. And that was important enough for me to take the hateration for. Did, did you ever waver in your beliefs when the, the no, documentary director came wavered. out and said there was a timeline issue, Michael I Jackson didn't wavered. have the train station? You know why I have not wavered? Because I've had girls at my school who were sexually assaulted and abused, and I have never won a case. And the reason I have never won a case is because when you put a girl on the witness stand and she can't remember, was it Thursday or Wednesday, the, 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 it, it's, it's automatically wow. discredited. And so when you're in the midst of trauma, 
something t terrible things happening to you, you may not remember the exact time. It's why, it, like, if I hear a, hear a noise or something in my house, I like look at the time because they're going to ask what time. What time was it? <laughs> oh my God! What time is it? So, so if you can't remember the day and the time and the da 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 da, everybody's like, well, okay. I guess it never happened. I guess it never happened. Oh, it was. I said it was that hotel, but it was that hotel. Oh, it probably never happened. So I've been through that. So no. Before I let you go, one last question that I have to ask that you've answered many times, but I never know if the answer will change. Is Oprah Winfrey running for president? <laughs> you don't even want that to happen. Why, why would you say that? You don't even want that to happen. You know, Gail, my dearest friend, uh, is, I, I thought she was actually serious. Like, I think you should do it. You should do it for the country. I said, you don't want that to happen because I have such a beautiful life. <laughs> I have such a beautiful life. Why would I want to put myself in that? I right. Have such a beautiful... Right, right? <laughs> I have such a beautiful life. I know my path, and my path isn't that. But whenever I decide whoever I want to support, I will get behind that person. Yeah. We'll be excited to watch it. We'll be so much for being on the show. Thank you. The Path Made Clear is available now. Oprah Winfrey, everybody.